Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if, if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Let's crack on with today's first story. Now, apparently this is one of those Reddit stories that's, that's done the rounds. People absolutely love it for whatever reason it was sent to me. But I said, why not? Let's dive into it, shall we? Would I be the arsehole if I complain to the owners of a cafe about how long it takes their employee to cut cheese? You can imagine my what the fuck face thinking, where's this one gonna go? <laughs> I work in an office building which has a cafe in it. It's not table service, you go up to the counter and have a choice of a hot meal, soup or a sandwich. The owners don't manage it as they're a catering company that supply the food in the morning. They leave the worker to deal with the distribution of the paninis and soup. He is a pleasant person and very talkative, and there is nothing particularly odd about him other than his apparent immunity to the passage of time itself. He will not prep anything. There's no sandwiches assembled and waiting to go. There's an empty fridge bit next to the counter. The racks stand barren, devoid of even a glimpse of a BLT. Okay, so the sandwiches are freshly prepared each time. Yes, great, but he doesn't prep the ingredients either. He has to take out and cut the cheese up every single time someone orders something, and he will take his time. The man will cut cheese with the concentration of someone disassembling the large Hadron Collider, and he does it on an order-by-order -order basis. I will explain the process. There will be a line of four people. The first will order a cheese panini. He will take out and cut open a panini from the cupboard. He will open the fridge, take out the 5k block of cheese, unwrap it, cut three slices with the aching determination of a man clinging to the last trace of his self-control, rewrap the cheese and place the cheese in the fridge. He will turn on the panini maker. It's not already on. He will assemble the panini and put it in. He will wait 20 minutes for the panini to cook, during which time he will start another order and begin the same process of taking out and unwrapping and slicing each ingredient before putting it away. He will take out, open, serve from, close, and put away each box of salad in turn. He will boil a kettle with enough water for one tea. Ladies and gentlemen, he will turn the machine off between paninis. <laughs> lunch only lasts two hours. We've had clients visit who attempt to get lunch during meeting breaks who return sandwichless and with a thousand yard stare. When he runs out of something, he doesn't score it off the board. Last week, he ran out of all types of cheese. All week! He just kept explaining it to everyone individually. He ponders about aimlessly like a Skyrim NPC in an inn. <laughs> Insurmountable tasks mounting in front of him. But he honestly seems to enjoy working there. It's like he just doesn't grasp the concept of pre-sliced cheese and well-timed panini makers. We've mentioned how long it takes him, but he just sort of laughs and says, Ah, fresh food. Just cut the cheese! Please just cut the cheese. The reasoning he's running out of food is the owners aren't selling as much and they're adjusting their stock accordingly. There's a lot of demand, but the supply takes 30 minutes to toast a panini and spends it talking shite about how mild this winter is. It's honestly driving me insane. But still, I feel like it'd be a dick move. <laughs> I absolutely love a post like this. I'm in tears. I'm in bits thinking about this. The situation, just picturing this, getting wound up by it. <laughs> and there was one notable comment that OP responds to. So Calvin comes in and says, no one's an arsehole here. The cheese man doesn't seem like an arsehole. Just not in the right job, maybe. Or maybe the owners get furious if he pre-slices and then some cheese gets wasted. If he runs out of cheese, he's clearly getting some sandwiches made, right? I think it's okay to bring it up to the owners that it takes too long to get a sandwich and they are losing business as a result. I would not throw your seemingly kind, happy server under the bus though. Let them figure out why it takes so long and what processes or people should change. OP says, thanks for this. That seems like the best course of action. I've discussed this with several other key players in the cheese drama. <laughs> what? <laughs> and think we're going to do a bit of recon on the situation. We're sending the least threatening among us in a fluffy cardigan to the cafe to ask him if he can prep the food or if it's a weird owner thing. Words will be chosen better than this. We'll go when he isn't busy, which honestly is any other time not between 12 and 2. If he says I'm not allowed, we'll take it up with the owners, emphasizing how lovely he is and we think the lack of prep specifically, which we have established is not his fault, but a top-down command, obviously we will not reveal. 
is an issue and we noticed a long wait. If he says, what is prep, I will erupt, feral, from the cardigan screaming, pounce over the counter and eat the entire five kilograms of cheese. <laughs> so OP does come in to give us an update and it says an update. I already ran out of characters, otherwise would have tagged this on the end. Other victims have weighed in upon my discussing this with them. He starts about 9am and takes a cigarette break in the middle of the two hour lunch. Apparently someone already asked him why he doesn't prep and he told them it makes his hands sore. I don't know if she had anything else to add there because at that point I just started screaming. Also to those of you picturing me as petty, slightly weird man, I'm happy to reveal I'm actually a far pettier, deranged woman. Also, I need to stop milking it now because my exasperated boyfriend keeps asking me if I keep going quiet because I'm thinking about this post and it's true. I'm ruining Saturday. <laughs> I'm going to bring this up kindly with a view to helping and supporting, as per Cardigan Pine below regardless. Also, thank you for all the awards. Holy shit. Opie comes in and gives us a final update and says, so I didn't update further as it felt like I was really milking the attention and being a bit insufferable. But that was probably somewhat my own anxiety about suddenly getting more than the attention of three people. I don't know if posting one here is okay. Probably is weird to do so too, but just as you were interested. So basically, I think the thing I failed to convey accurately was that the complaint was on behalf of everyone. Like I wasn't routinely forgetting lunch, but we all do sometimes. And when you have an office of 40, that affects someone every day. Also affected our clients who visited, etc. Ultimately, my boss ended up complaining after the guy went for another cigarette break at exactly 1pm. But it was constructive and nice, and the guy ended up getting extra training and the owner came in to assist at lunch and stuff. However, shit started getting crazy with COVID, so the focus kind of went away. We went into lockdown a few weeks after, if I remember correctly, and haven't been back in the building in over a year. Hopefully soon though, but at this point I'm kind of dreading it as it means I need to spend money on new clothes. I've gained so much weight in lockdown that when I need to put on a bra and pants, I look like sausage links. <laughs> oh, this person's way with words. The guy has a different job now in a call center, presumably costing them thousands in calls per minute due to his glacially chill pace. So I don't know if the cafe will even be back open when we go back. Also, there are a few comments that the guy may have had autism. I don't know. I have a few friends with autism and I used to work both as a teacher and support worker so I know a lot of people with autism. I appreciate I don't know for certain but I don't think he had it. I think he just didn't care that much and wasn't really suited to hospitality. But one global pandemic later, it seems to have worked out. When I used to work in the Bista area and I used to go to a sandwich shop sometimes at lunch and there was this fantastic sandwich shop there that would make the best sandwiches but holy shit did they take their time i found it in some cases i just want to offer look i'll give you the money but can i make the sandwich please <laughs> but i love it when we get a op like this with this way of words it always absolutely tickles me and the vivid image op gave me when they said that they're gonna go feral jump out of their car they're gonna eat the five kilogram of cheese <laughs> absolutely amazing what do you guys make of this situation let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story and our next story comes from a deleted user who says, would I be the asshole if I reject my husband's gift? Let's come with an update as well. My husband, 28, and I, 27 female, have birthdays during the same week. I am big on birthdays, so for my husband's, I often go all out. And he also does a great job with my birthday most of the time. I do not expect the same level as I give because I know I do a lot. For my husband's birthday this year, I threw a big party for him. People flew in from other states and I got it catered and it was so fun. I also spent a lot of money and time on it. I was planning it for months. I also got him a very nice gift that is something he will definitely use. He showed everyone at the party because it really was perfect lol. So my birthday comes, I wake up and he's golfing. Then he gets home and tells me the plan for my birthday is to go to a bakery and a bookstore. I was starving so we got brunch first. Then we go to the bookstore and I left my credit card at work, so I had no money and asked if he'd get a book for me for my birthday, and he originally said no, but eventually he relented. Then we go to the bakery and I got a coffee and a few treats. It was like a serve yourself type of place, and every time I picked up an item, he got annoyed about the cost and made a comment. It was not an expensive bakery. The average item cost two to three dollars and I got three items long. We got a slice of cake to share. I went to the bathroom and got back and he'd eaten most of the cake. 
The day was very nice, but I was kind of sad about the lack of effort and then the constant complaining about the cost of things. Now is a good time to mention, we don't struggle with money in the slightest. So then he mentions my birthday present. I was very clear on what I wanted for my birthday. Tickets to my favorite artist. And no, not Taylor Swift. I told him like five times, you could get very good seats for about $60 to $70 per person. So he tells me I'll get my gift on Friday and it's an event and he wants to keep it a surprise. And Friday is the day of the concert. So I got super excited expecting tickets. Well, long story short, I found out my gift is attending a baseball game. I was immediately annoyed because I hate baseball. Sorry, baseball fans. Everyone knows I hate baseball and he also hates it. I'd rather just not get a gift at all than pretend to enjoy sitting through a whole baseball game. So would I be the arsehole if I told him I don't want my gift? I'm going to start in the comments with make life super who says not the arsehole. Is he trying to break up with you? Playing golf, which takes the whole morning. Annoyed at spending money on you on your birthday, especially bad. I don't care if it was also his birthday nearby. Lackluster events for the day. Ate almost all of the cake. Tickets to an event neither of you like. This is like purposefully mean. Sepia says not the arsehole sounds like the bar is low for he does a great job most of the time. Like he doesn't complain about buying you something or get you your own full piece of cake. The gift is to himself. You deserve better. Opie responded saying he also hates baseball. Like we went to baseball three years ago and both agreed we hated it and wouldn't go back. It's one of the reasons I find it so odd. I will also say usually he does way better. I swear the bar is not this low. I do agree this year I deserve better. Thanks for your input. Wooden Scholar says definitely not the arsehole. What the fuck? Why are you with him? He really is perfect otherwise, which I doubt, and just doesn't care about birthdays at all. You can make it work by from now. Each of you gets to plan his own birthdays and party. Honestly, OP, if you want a party like the one you threw for him, do it yourself. Don't wait for anyone around you to make you happy like that. Sometimes it's better to just take the wheel into your own hands. Now to the husband problem you might be having. Is this the norm of how he treats you? From your post, he doesn't sound like he knows you or is interested in getting to know you. Please think long and hard about his qualities. If the good outlays the bad and if you're happy with the dynamic of your relationship. If this was a single incident on his part, then simply communicate your feelings on this to him in a calm and collective manner. Make suggestions on how to improve in the future or work on a solution together. If this happens on a regular basis, you should leave. Relationships are give and take on both ends. Not you give and he takes. Good luck, OP. An OP responder saying, I definitely did not want or expect a party and this is not the norm at all. That's probably why I'm so disappointed. The last gift he gave me was a romantic trip away, which we had so much fun on. When before that, he took me to an art exhibit. I've been wanting to go for a while. A great lunch and then the entire day boating. My favorite. He took me to a specific bakery I've been saying for a while that I wanted to go. And the bookstore is definitely something I love. The gift is what I'm most disappointed about because neither of us like baseball. Lane says, not the arsehole, curious if you two are having money issues. He spent a lot on his birthday and now he's very concerned about the cost of pastries. And the baseball game, something you both dislike. It smells like someone gave him free tickets. Opie says, no, we do not have any money issues. We both make over six figures in a very low cost of living area. We have about 100,000 in savings. We don't have kids or anything and we live in a tiny house that we love and can afford on one of our salaries. We're going on a two-week European trip in a few months and he's just suggested today that we extend it another week because he knows how badly I want to go to a certain country but couldn't with the original plan. I also don't think he bought the tickets yet. He told me that he'll probably be moving the date of the surprise because it's supposed to rain Friday and he wants the weather to be nice for it. Anyway, OP updates the next day and says I was not going to post an update but my original post got a lot more comments than I anticipated so I am. First, a clarification. My husband did not tell me the gift was a baseball game. He keeps a list of reminders and when I was cleaning, I saw the reminder that said, my name's birthday gift, get tickets, baseball game. So I assumed it was a baseball game. Also, another thing I want to add is I absolutely love surprises, which is the reason everything surrounding my birthday was so hush hush because my husband knows I love the anticipation. Anyways, he brings it up tonight and I finally ask if he would just tell me what the surprise is. It was not a baseball game lol. It's an adventurous activity type gift that I've been wanting to do forever. I'm being purposefully vague because this is a throwaway. 
think skydiving or bungee jumping. It also comes with a dinner at my favorite restaurant. It's a very expensive date evening for us and had a cost over a thousand dollars. As much as I wanted to go to a concert, this tops it by 100. The reason a reminder mentioned baseball is the activity doesn't run when there is a game. I also brought up my actual birthday and he apologized for it. He told me he was so focused on planning the surprise and was treating that as my birthday celebration that he didn't realize I wanted him to plan something for my actual birthday. He scrambled and just picked out some of my favorite things to do. He also apologized for being very cost focused and explained that he was concerned because of the cost of the real gift. We don't struggle with money, but we do have a budget we both make together and follow. And we also set limits for how much we spend on gifts and holidays. I'm sure a lot of people will still call him horrible and selfish, but it really was a bad case of him trying to plan a fun surprise for me and keeping it a surprise because he knows that's what I'd want. And me making assumptions and not communicating and him not communicating because of the surprise. Very middle school sitcom. So my American friends are going to have to help me out on this one. What happens in a baseball field that could be considered like an extreme adventurous activity like skydiving or bungee jumping but in the middle of a baseball field? I mean, could it be bungee jumping? Can they get a crane in the middle of a baseball field? I don't know. You guys are going to have to help me out on that one. I got a clue. But I'm glad things did turn out well in the end. Now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. Which is from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit from NetActual2149. and says, Am I the Arsehole for saying my body is not just a result of having had no children? My female 26 went to the pool with some female colleagues from work today. We all know each other pretty well but only ever see each other in scrubs at the hospital. Most of my colleagues are a few years older than I am, and some have kids. We were all wearing bikinis and having a nice time so far, and out of the blue, one colleague complimented me on my body. It was a genuinely nice comment, and I blushed and said thank you. I am pretty fit, I have a dog I walk daily, and I am a dancer and used to dance seven days a week. Ever since I've been working, I dance less though. While my body doesn't look nice as it used to back then, I still am lean and, I suppose, pretty muscular especially the legs. After the compliment, another colleague with kids said, that of course I have a nice body, I don't have kids. Some others then chimed in and said, how easy it all was before kids and how easy I have it and my body is nothing special. I didn't say anything because I'm pretty uncomfortable with body talk in general, but at some point it became a bit much and I said, I don't think my body is just from not having had kids, but I think I also work out a lot. I also said, not having kids doesn't equal a good body. And having had kids doesn't equal a bad body. The colleagues then exploded on me and said, oh, I belittle parenthood and downplay pregnancy. I should just wait until I have kids and those legs are going to disappear quickly. I said nothing to that and the rest of the outing passed rather awkwardly. Am I the arsehole for saying what I said? Can you ever imagine saying to someone, your body is nothing special? Oh my word, it just baffles me sometimes. Like, that runs through someone's head and it comes out their mouth. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? Fan says, obviously not the asshole. You got a compliment, accepted it gracefully, and they felt the need to attack. Your body is nothing special. It's crazy when you're not fishing for compliments. I get it. But looking good in a swimsuit compliment is held high in regard as many people are insecure about their swimsuit body. They're probably stung to hear ego cookies were being given out and, and then not receive one. But that's no reason to degrade someone. Mindless locksmith says not the arsehole and I appreciate you sticking up for mum bodies. That was what we call a pack of harridans. Never heard that before. And they are jealous and projecting. I've had four children. My body isn't the same. That doesn't make it bad. I love myself as I am. I'm sorry you spent the day with a bunch of insecure mean girls. And one more comment from can't handle this forever who says very tepid no one's an arsehole here. If I had to pick an arsehole it wouldn't be OP. And a giant Jesus fucking Christ yikes. This is never a good conversation to have even with people you know well and like. The colleagues created a football field's worth of landmines and then you all stormed through it, detonating it and now everyone is a casualty. They complimented your body, only to instantly take the compliment away by calling attention to the fact that you are child free. I never assume this is anyone's choice by the way and it's just a thing you should never ever say to a person because you don't know their fertility journey, even at 26. Then with all the weird scrutiny on your body and them talking about it like you weren't even there and how it came to be or not be. You bristle, understandably, and try to defend yourself and your body. 
made a statement that is objectively true about good slash bad bodies, while emotionally obtuse that you were ganged up on and backed into a corner. You didn't disparage parenthood or pregnancy. They were patronizing. You were defensive. The whole thing was a clusterfuck, starting with your colleague who decided it was a good idea to start comparing physiques. Next time, scrubs at the pool. <laughs> P.S. Bodies aren't good or bad. They're bodies. Damn. Now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? How would you have dealt with it if it was you? Maybe you have a different opinion on the matter as always. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now just a huge thank you as always for getting involved in the stories, your love, your support, your time is always, always incredible. And I never get over it. You know, we've been doing this for two, three, four years. I can't even remember anymore. And I still see the same people get involved, new people coming to get involved in the community as well. And I'm just always blown away by your love and support towards me, towards each other. Just absolutely incredible. Please keep being you. You're amazing. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.